Welcome, welcome. And here we are with our next of the 50 different styles of slow stitching. This is beginning to be a wonderful, exciting project for me. And I hope that you're trying to do something like it yourself and be creative and tap really deep and find out what it is you really like to make. Now this one is, I'm calling the Shadowed Jungle Secret. And as I uh, was doing with my last videos, I try to make up a little story or description of a project before I begin when I want it to have a certain mood, feel, uh, something like that, because it helps me to, to get in the mood, to get in the world, to get in that mindset and to know what I uh, want to incorporate into this. So let me start out by giving you the little story that I made up for this um, Shadow Jungle secret. Deep within the Emerald Amazon rainforest, where sunlight barely penetrates the dense canopy, a botanical enigma thrives, the Shadow Jungle secret. A flower of unparalleled beauty blooms in defiance of darkness. Its rose-colored petals, streaked with obsidian, absorb what little light filters through, giving it an unearthly glow. For centuries, indigenous tribes whispered, whispered legends of the elusive blossom believing it to be a gateway to other worlds. Explorers and scientists alike sought it in vain, its existence remaining a tantalizing mystery. I, a tenacious creator, dedicated myself to uncovering this floral phantom. After much perilous expeditions, I finally discovered its elusive form. As I touched its soothing textures, the flower seems to pulse with ancient secrets, as if deciding whether to reveal its mysteries or remain further into the shadows. I hope you see what I strive to do when infusing mood, feeling, aura about a project that I'm working on. Not only does it work most of the time, it's also just a lot of fun. Who doesn't like to come up with a story? And when you write a story ahead of time, believe it or not, from that story, I knew I wanted deep earthy tones. I wanted a flower that was colorful, but blended entirely with that darkened uh, underlayer, jungle underlayer, and would be elusive to find in all that greenery and fauna. So I think I did that in uh, what I came up here with. I used a very fibrous fabric in the background, uh, and it already was streaked with three colors of green, which just worked out perfect. I used a batik for the flower that had the obsidian streaking in it. And I really, that really played out well for me. I used a little of iridescent uh, fiber here and here and here that would give a little glow uh, if hit with light just right. I added a little more fibery texture to this one uh, because of the undergrowth that would be in here, okay. Uh, the little stem is very tiny and fibrous, like trying to hide itself in all the greenery behind it, okay. I hope that you can see the simple stitching I did in the background and on the flowers. Left the uh, fabrics and the colors to do the talking. Okay. Now, 
it's amazing to me what different looks we get from all these different things we're doing. Let's just compare that real briefly to the last two we did and bring us up to par. The one before this one was the Coastal, the Cape Cod Coastal. Same pattern, different mood, different feel. Sitting by the seaside, working our way through a jungle. Diff totally different vibes coming off of these, okay? So this one's relaxing, meditative. Oh, so reminiscent of the seaside. This one is adventurous. Almost gives us a sense of danger lurking. Things hiding in the darkness. This one, the one before that, was Great Grandma's Parlor. It gives us a sense of reminiscing, of going to the past and thinking about what, what might have been there, what we saw as a child, or what we might have seen in our great-grandmother's parlor. It gives us a time capsule. So overall, when we look at these different ones, we see that we can play with mood over and over and over again. And we can invoke that mood in our uh, those who look at our art and our pieces by really having a mood in mind when we work a piece, okay? And that directs us in that uh, path so that we can arrive at something that will actually do that for us, you know? Uh, interior designers are so good at that. Uh, sometimes uh, grab an interior design magazine and flip through it and see the different moods that they create in rooms, uh, in outdoor spaces, and so forth and so on. Uh, by their color palette, by the fabrics they choose, the lines and the curves and the furniture they choose, the embellishments they add, they're all building a mood in, in those um, spaces and we can learn a lot from them. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And what's next? Well, we're gonna go with a sock hop of the 50s. Does that sound like fun? It does to me. Until then, please stay very scrap happy.